Hello, everyone. Um, thank you very much for being here together tonight uh, at Fotografiska. We are very glad that you, you came. And uh, so my name is Florian Bougo. I'm an art director and designer in the Target team in Europe. And I'm here to talk to you about a new collection that we are launching these days. And it's called ID Mixonomy. And the baseline is the art of mixing. I guess you will understand a bit more why we're talking about art and mixing. Um, this adventure, uh, a bit of background, um, started like three, four years ago. Um, I was contacted by the big boss of Tucket, so I was a bit intimidated at the time. And, well, we have a mission for you. He's like, yeah. Uh, and I realize I'm talking to architects and designers at the moment. And uh, he said, well, you know, could you make vinyl a premium material? <laughs> could you repeat the question, please? Could you make vinyl a premium material? That was, that was, the, that was the pitch. And, um, well, um, I'm a designer myself. Um, I know what we're doing with vinyl, generally speaking. Uh, you know what we do with material. And so there was a lot of it that we need to dig into understanding what the symbols of that material is, because we have a lot of prejudgments. And the first thing is, well, this is a, this is a chemical, basically. And, and I think that's mostly the reason why people don't see it as a very interesting material most of the time. It's artificial, it's, uh, it's an industrial material, it's a, nat a natural material that you would find in nature. But what's interesting when you start to um, investigate a bit more um, is that it has a bit more into it than just being artificial. Um, it has, of course, this bad taste of, if you look at this glass here, of a waste. If you look even up at the iMac, like, you know, it's uh, something about obsolescence, so that's not very positive. But it also has this um, interesting things um, about being versatile a lot. Uh, you can find in many, many ways. It has a very technical aspect to it, about hygiene, uh, about waterproof. Um, it also has been used by many designers, and you, you see here these uh, car seats from the De Chevaux. Uh, back uh, in the years, and it's been used quite extensively uh, by some uh, brands for these kind of fabrics. And it's very resistant, it has you know, very high you know, perception on this. Um, it's been also used by designers. We also have, of course, that you know, little taste of, you know, well, oldies yet, but not so goodies sometimes. And you see the kitchen here of my grandma, and you kind of, kind of smell of the humidity and this kind of peeling off and, you know, not very positive either. And it's very imitation, like, yeah, okay, um, yeah, got that. But then it's also about color. It's also about challenge in, well, I could say like sex uh, and uh, kind of being out there, very open, very outspoken, uh, kind of uh, also trendy with all these records. And something I really like about that material is that presence with Big Pen here, and we'll have this example later on. Why? Because it's also a tool, a material that made things possible for a lot of people that couldn't afford it. It's a democratic material with a lot of social impact on society. And I think when you gather all this, uh, well, you maybe have something that's not just that poor material that's on the floor somewhere here from the 70s. So then we also investigate what premium means, and we turn around many, many stories. Um, one interesting thing about being premium is to bring something else to the world, uh, bringing a view, an angle, um, something, yeah, special. And this is the example of Bernard Pai, he's an artist. And what he does is like he's picking up things from, from stores and he builds this amorphosis. And for example, here you see what it looks like when you pick up some, some stuff in a supermarket and you actually make from a very special point the portrait of Louis XIV that's very well known and using you know, toilet paper. 
um, but it could also be the Okusai wave, it could be also some Greek sculptures. It's really interesting to see how we can do. And this is what I mean by, you know, just taking a step aside and trying to look at things. So this is really part premium. It's like, huh, I didn't expect that. Uh, but it's also true from a communication standpoint. If you think about um, this, this brand, uh, it's a um, retailer. That means it's um, something like a supermarket brand. And generally speaking, those brands, they are having their own product that they sell to the people. So generally it's like, ah, it's not the real thing. It's more like, like the cheap thing. And well, they, they chose another way of looking at things. And on their packaging, besides having some really interesting color combination and quite you know, interesting already, they play around with words. And on each packaging, you have this little sentence that plays around with what the product is about. And um, I love that tomato can because it says, you know, at Monoprix, when we are bored, we just peel tomatoes. I thought it was really funny. Um, so yeah, so there are, there are plenty of expressions. Here is another example here of a store where they give an ex ex a different angle of what a store should be because they change every month. They change the, it's quite a big atrium. I don't know if you've been to that place. It's called Merci. And once it's a, it's a swimming pool, once it's a, Umbrella uh, store once it's and it's entirely it's quite a big surface. It totally changes again. It gives another angle of what experience should be. So that's first thing that we could say about premium. And then we thought, by huh, what else? And then we figured out by looking at some many many stories that the detail is extremely important. Paying attention to details. You have the example here of the Louboutin shoe, of course, that you might know. But what I like the most is certainly the Dieter Harms job with Brown Brand. And when you look at it, with all these years after those were created, they're still very much interesting because they are so precise in the shapes of the, of, of, of the curves and the details of the colors that are being combined together. Something else that we thought after was that if you want to be noticeable as being something like of a value, you need sometimes to be really bold. You need to be expressive. We're, I was more talk about intensity, and I think that for you architects, designers, intensity is extremely important. If I have some other pictures. I'm thinking about Olivari. Uh, these are door handles made in Italy, and I remember this picture of a, this, this hummingbird that's kind of come close to to the door handle, and you realize that this door handle is really solid, and it's, but it's not just solid, it's, it's really strong, and you feel that you know, it's very good quality just because of that hummingbird coming close. And here we have some examples of this installation from uh, James Turrell in the Guggenheim, and the, the, the power of how to play with the lights. Uh, swatch with a pop-up here where, you know, the versatility of the brand is totally expressed just right there. You get it. Um, and, um, well, there's a friend of mine who just, um, you know, invented this shoe where you can change the heels. And there again, by this detail, but then very boldly, you can totally change the shoe by changing the heel. So all this is really about how do you get noticed? Well, sometimes intensity rather than boldness. I would rather use the intensity word. And finally, um, there, here, there's the, the big pen story. Um, the idea of a premium brand is that it helps people to tell stories. It's a storytelling tool. And um, I really like that uh, idea of uh, the big pen. Why? Because um, it has this social impact I talked to you about with you know, giving the opportunity for millions and millions of children to be able to write to have an access to reading, to writing. And it's funny how they pursued that DNA in terms of communication, because if you look at this black and red over there, it says Stendhal, the, red, the rouge et le noir, the red and the black, which is a very famous novel from Stendhal. And it's just, this, this is it. This is how do I make a tool that's a democratic, democratic access. So telling stories is very interesting. And just another example, Diptyque here, it's a perfume brand. Um, and the people that were at the origin of this brand, I am 
you might not notice first, but then if you look at it very precisely, they were not scent designers, they are graphic designers. A group of graphic designers from the, uh, the 50s and the 60s, and they built that brand just like this, just be because they liked to play around with fabric, so there's a lot of fabric and a lot of just, just that, and it's really interesting how that evolved in time. So, all that observation, all that discovery, talking to some of your colleagues you know, everywhere in Europe and saying first, oh, yeah, we're not final. And then, you know, mixing that, all that together, we, we figured out that if we want to do something and change something, we need to invent a new language. Um, something that is not about imitation, that's one but also that shows the true material qualities. And we mentioned that already, like color is embedded in our, let's say, collecting, collective mind, that you know, it's part of the material, and also that it's very versatile. So that means like in the DNA of the collection, we need to talk about color, and we need to talk about something that is versatile in, in, in some way. Um, and it's an opportunity, a tool to tell stories. It's really that what have we, we worked on. And so here it is, the very, very simple principle of ID mixonomy. And it's just like, you know, we're so clear and simple. It's just about mixing colors into shapes and try to make something out of it that would make sense. Um, if you talk about the color palette, um, and you think about, so these are kind of plain colors that we are projecting here on the screen. But if you remember the story about the details, if you look at those colors and you'll see the samples pretty much everywhere here in this place, they are not just like plain colors. There is something in the color that we worked with that vibrates. <coughs> it's not just plain. It's, there's, there's a little you know, work on mixing several colors together. That means like that color work. Um, that's for the texture of the color. What we can say also in the way we composed it Again, here you have the results, but the process was more, hey, what, would like, what kind of stories would you like to, to tell with these colors? And so we investigated different kinds of setups, like, for example, what, it, what would be something classic? You know, what is classic today? So we went out to see about fashion, we went out, and we say, hey, you know, if you want to be classic, but then be also modern, you need to be able to mix very nice neutrals, cool and warm, that we work together and maybe introduce a bit of color together with it. So that it's not being boring. I'm schizophrenic, I'm for target design team, so we need to think about a lot of people. And when we think classic, classic doesn't mean boring. And we wanted not that to be boring. Of course, we also added some colors. We, we thought about some environments where it's about traveling, it's about gathering some influence from other cultures. And there, the idea of very sensorial, um, um, feelings like odor, like scent, perfume, leather, musk, something like that's really, we wanted to work on that spice story. And this is where, where we did with this very spicy tone that you see here at the bottom. And uh, well, yeah, we had some, 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 some stories like hames, you know, how they source their materials. Uh, and we had that kind of you know, idea in the back of our heads. We also talked about, you know, under another kind of a taste, you know, what about sweetness? What about, you know, something that we gourmandise, as we say in French, something that you want to eat? And that's, re that's where we come up with these kind of pastel colors, but we didn't think about them as being childish. We wanted them to be, yeah, tasteful. And so that's the reason why they're, you know, they're, they're really interesting uh, pastel colors because they are this kind of grayish, a little bit in it, and it's not, again, plain color. It vibrates. That was very important. Um, we also thought about bringing a bit of luxury into that, uh, because we thought that, hey, you know, what about, you know, a very cozy boutique hotel somewhere, uh, I don't know, um, I don't know, in, in Stockholm. Uh, and uh, that certainly we would like to have some dark colors that we maybe would mix with mid lake effects. And um, we have very interesting mid lake effects. That's really very much resonate with uh, what Maren just talked to you about this of this metallic, metallic shades colors and uh, and finally well you see also some very bright colors here um, the reason for these to be there is that we imagine also that some people would like to be signaletic like they want to to shine to be kind of 
even brutal. And the background behind that, we thought about brands such as Nike. Nike stores are just fantastic. I don't know if you've been to some of them, but they are just great. And sometimes it's just like a line of orange somewhere. Or Adidas also. This party, they have very, you know, primary colors, very bold products. And so we, um, we, 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 we have sort of a couple of them, so that, that can range. And in the end, the challenge for us was really to be able that, you know, if you mixed all this together, well, not all of them, but some of them, you know, well, it works. And you, I'm sure that you'll manage to experience that later on with the little samples that are on the table. That was for the colors. Then, of course, there's this story of the shapes. So that's got to go fast because, well, um, do I have them? Uh, oh, okay, they're in my bag somewhere. I can show you that earlier because I still have the, the first, first prototypes that I cut from my hands. And very early, um, we, we went to the, uh, the uh, hexagon story um, because this is, let's say, in the in the air, I would say, of the time that we live in, and also because it gave us the opportunity to cut some things that were totally combinable, that you would have a set of uh, some shapes that are compatible. And as you can see here in the animation, well, within this diamond, you can put you know, herring bones as much as triangles, and they are compatible. So you can have organized patterns, but then you can you know, just like shake and mix different kinds of shapes, and it will work. It's compatible. So this is really what we wanted to have. This there again here is the versatility, versatility of the material we can work with with the vinyl. It's, it's totally possible to do that. It's much harder to do it with wood. It's much harder to do it with ceramics. But with vinyl, it's you know it's fairly you know easy and accessible. I'm not telling that it was easy to produce. I'm just saying that it, you know it's accessible. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, so finally, so how do we? How do we use that uh, with concrete examples? Um, I'm going to show you a couple of things that are here on the tables in the books uh, and review some of them. So let's say that in the background of all these stories, there's a lot of cemental spirit to it. Now, what's interesting is that because we have this color palette that's, that's, that's there, it's really interesting to see how we can make something that would look very retro-like, like this, this you know, cube. Uh, very traditional, and make it something a bit more daring, uh, and or even more luxurious. Uh, you can make it also classic. So it's really interesting to see that you know, compared to what's available in traditionally, you can really make it evolve to another space, to another, um, let's say, um, atmosphere or environment of, of 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 perception. And of course, yes, here the sweet story that I was mentioning about. And the, yeah, it can be something that kind of uh, charming uh, and um, interesting. Another example here that we call, it's just like playing around with the structure of the hexagon. And something that's interesting is to play around with randomness. Uh, because it's, it's very easy to, you know, to have a couple of colors. You just start with a color, and then you just place it randomly. And uh, this Tomet Paradise uh, is really interesting because you can make it very bold in just one shade of colors, but then you can also mix them in a different way, um, make it very fresh with the greens, and contrast it just by playing on com complementary colors like here. It's very bold, the way we treat it. Another example is the herringbone. I'm just starting with, you know, let's say, kind of traditional patterns. Uh, there are more different ones that are available, and you I count on you to go and explore. But what we wanted to do with this herringbone is just like, you know, how do you add twist? And it's very easy so that, you know, you just introduce some random colors in there. And because the palette is there, it's easy to just provoke a bit that uh, classic spirit of the herringbone. And typically here, you know, this, this pink uh, spirit, Something with you know introducing some metallic effects here and there. Um, oops. Yeah, here like the gray story, the grayish, cozy, neutral story. But then you add a little of aqua in there, and it, it's like it's a different story again. And of course, you could be extremely bold, like with the primary colors we we mentioned. And 
I like that picture because this, this is not a, an illustrator or a Photoshop story. This is the real installation in a real place. It's really graphic. It just, I think, you know, it's, it's just like new. I, I mean, we were so surprised the first time we, we tried it. And uh, on and on and on, and we have some examples of people using it now in different places. It's always you know, fantastic the way it looks. You're just like, wow, it's like you've been using painting illustrator on the floor. It's really interesting for that. Um, here, another example that I want to illustrate to talk about the potential of the collection that you know, we saw some relatively small patterns repetitions. Then here, it's also possible to make something that's a macro motif, because you can also use the different shapes to create something that's larger depending on the size of the room that you have. And there, this, this is some, something like a pattern that would be something like two meter and a half size, so it's really big. So you need to have a very big space. So that's totally feasible, of course. And there again, you can play around with you know, two colors in that case for this, um, this, uh, this story. And then again, you can make, make it, yep. There, um, classic, a bit less classic. You can play with Kamayu tones or you can make comp complementary colors, so depending on what rendering you want to do. Uh, the last two examples are really into the spirit of fashion in a way that they're really tied to some patterns that we see in, uh, well, uh, in, some, uh, in some areas of fashion. So there was this one we called it bow tie. It's just playing around with uh, the triangles and the trapeze. And um, well, there again, it's really interesting to see how you can render totally different stories. Uh, again, very, very bold, but then more subtle. Again, make it luxurious again by mixing dark colors together with metallic effects. And uh, this, is in this, this combination here we use in our design center. And you're going to see some, some pictures of flying around during, uh, during the, 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 the dinner. And it, I mean, it's there again where you know, it really works very well. It's really nice. Uh, and the last example I want to talk about is uh, club tie. So there again is a tribute to this very much textile story of you know the the tie that that exists uh, and um, well you know these are stories that you can tell uh, from the way it works and and again a lot of versatility about mixing the colors together different environments that you create different stories um, and there again here this is taken from the design center as I said you know it's really interesting how the way it works and the way it's um, the effect it produces on the floor, and it's really interesting. So, um, yeah, these old patterns that I showed are gathered together in a book or on the configurator that we have online today, but then you can just go wild. Uh, here are several examples that, you know, we created. So here in the real, right behind me, this is something that I created for the Architect at Work. I don't know if you know that event. And this is the, what we are showing around Europe these days. So it was already shown in Belgium, in France, in Paris. Uh, it's coming to Milan in Architect at Work. I think it's like in two weeks or something. And um, yeah, well, it's really interesting how we work. And so I had to create one version that would be pink, one version that would be blue, depending on the country, what they wanted. Uh, but then we also you know, used that just plainly to, to show the concept in... Uh, um, in um, here in the Atelier, which is a new showroom that we just opened in Paris. And it's interesting to see you know, how these shapes totally combine together so easily. It's just like, yeah, you can't be wrong. <laughs> and um, we worked with some designers for the Eurshop uh, event in March, and they managed to make some, some, some patterns within the big patterns. I mean, like they wanted to show, we wanted to demonstrate again the potential of the material, and there you see that you can you can create sub you know sections, and you can really mix them so that you know it looks like um, well very original, nothing nothing seen any, anywhere else. And I'm going to conclude on yeah this sentence that you see here, the art of mixing, and I I guess now this is your job to do that, not me anymore. 
uh, and I guess it's a really great tool to build some something different. Um, I really do believe that this is kind of unique in the market today, um, uh, and um, this is bringing some very fresh proposals and tools. And I think it's the first time for me, and I think that we managed to do that, to show that material as a real material for what it is, not, you know, lying or you know, bragging about what it is. It's, this, is, this is it. This is what vinyl is about. This is about color. This is about versatility. This is it. And uh, I think we're very, very uh, happy of the result. And I'm, sh I'm sure that you will be very happy with what you can do with it. So thank you very much for your attention. Please enjoy the dinner. And uh, I'm here if you have any questions, of course. Thank you very much.